Hi, I'm Michael Correa and this is Psych Exam Review. In this video, I want to explain how we're able to perceive depth. So we see a world that appears to be three-dimensional, and yet our retinas are flat surfaces that light is projected onto. So they can really only see in 2D. So how is it that we're able to feel like the world is in 3D when we look around? All right, so these are a number of different cues that our brain uses to figure out how much depth there is in particular situations and how far away things are from us. So the first group of cues that we'll talk about are called monocular cues, and that just means one eye. So these are cues that work even if you only use one eye. We'll see later there's other cues that involve the use of both eyes. So what are these monocular cues? Well, the first we have is linear perspective. And this is the idea that parallel lines converge as they travel away from us into the distance, right? So if you look at you know, train tracks appear to join together in the distance, even though, of course, they don't actually join together. They stay parallel. Uh, next, we have relative size. Now, this is the idea that things that are closer to us appear to be bigger. So if we look at two people, if we look down the sidewalk and we see one person that the image on the, re on the retina is much larger than the other person, we assume that the people are probably roughly the same size, but that one person is much closer to us than the other one. Next, we have texture gradient. So this is the idea that we can see things more clearly when they're close to us. We can see textures. Right? So if you're looking out and you can see lots of detail on something very clearly and crisply, that tells you that it's probably close to you. It's not really far off in the distance because if it were, you wouldn't be able to see it that clearly. Next we have interposition. And this is just the idea that if something blocks the view of another object, then it's probably closer to you. Right? If I have my hand here and you can't see my face anymore, well, then that tells you that my hand is closer to you than my face. Otherwise, it wouldn't block it. And lastly, we have the idea of shading. This is the idea that we use the way that shadows fall in order to tell us about how close things are to us. And you use this every time you walk up a flight of stairs, or even just as you walk and you see the slight shadow cast by a sidewalk. You can sort of automatically calculate, without even thinking, about how big of a step you have to take in order to get up that curb. Okay, so I thought I would uh, draw a picture here and try to use each of these different cues and see how they would work in an actual picture. Now, this obviously is a flat two-dimensional picture, but hopefully it will have a, some sense of depth. Now, I'm not a great artist, so it probably won't be amazing, but we'll get an idea of each of the cues sort of in practice. So let's start with linear perspective. And we'll start with this simple idea that I mentioned here. All right, so here's sort of a horizon here, and then we'll just have some train tracks which sort of converge off in the distance. Right? And this immediately gives us a sense of depth to our picture. We feel like this part of the picture is farther away than this part. Now we'll expand on that by drawing some people here. So here's one person here and here's another person here. Now using this idea of relative size we see that this person feels closer to us, right? It could be the case that this is a tiny person floating in the air here next to this person, but that's not probably how you're going to perceive it. You're going to just assume that this person is about the same size as this person, just farther away, and therefore the image on your retina is much smaller. All right, now let's add some texture gradient. So let's imagine that we're looking at, uh, you know, some little tree here or something. Or actually, let's, uh, rather than a tree, let's use... Sorry. Let's do a little uh, plant here. It'd be a little easier for me to draw. So if we imagine, you know, uh, some plant here, sort of close to us, right? We can see all of the details. We can see individual leaves on there, maybe, right? We can see the veins on the leaves. I'm not able to draw this in a great amount of detail. Whereas, you know, the plant back here is just kind of a little bit less detailed. And, you know, the one over here is just like a green spot. Right. We can't really see much detail at all. Now, I've also added some relative size here, but uh, we, could, we could imagine that even if this one was a, a much larger plant, right? so it's similar in size to the other one, but we can't see as much detail. And that tells us that it's farther away. Whereas this one, we can see all of the fine detail. All right, so that's texture gradient. Now we'll add some uh, interposition here. Um, so let's just... Uh, add some, you know, 
sign here or something in front of this guy's face. We've got, you know, uh, oh, let's see. Okay, so when we look at this, you know, we're going to assume that this sign is closer to us because it's blocking our view of this guy here, and so uh, that tells us something about the depth. And finally, we'll add some shading. Um, so I'll put a little shading into this picture, and this is just to give you an idea of where the light is coming from. Now let's draw two similar objects here. Okay, now I'm going to shade these differently. Okay, so what I'm trying to express here, and this is probably the hardest uh, thing to try to draw in this, is if you were looking at these objects, you hopefully get the sense that this one is a hole, right? That this is an indentation, right? Because of the way the shadow is falling on this part of it here, right? We don't usually see the shadows on tops of things. So that tells you that there's some depth going down here. Whereas this one, where the shadow is on the bottom here, tells you that, you know, this is a rock or something that you could trip over, that this, you know, uh, is something that's Sort of sticking out in the world, whereas this is something that's sticking in. Right? So that's one way that we use shading. And again, as I said, you use this type of thing when you look at a flight of stairs. Right? The, the way that the shadows fall on the steps tell you which part is a step, which part is a sort of vertical part, which part is a horizontal part you can step on. Um, and you do that, again, unconsciously, without even thinking about it. You just see the stairs and you immediately know how to walk up them. Okay, so those are all of the monocular cues. There's a couple other cues. Actually, these next two are also monocular, but uh, these involve motion. So these are motion-based cues. So there's two main ways that we use motion to tell about depth. The first of these is something called motion parallax. And the idea of motion parallax is that things appear to move at different speeds based on how far away from us they are. So, sort of a great way to demonstrate this is just to imagine that you're looking out, you know, a train window here. Let's go ahead and give ourselves this same white background here. And so I'm looking out, this is a, some train window. And as I'm looking out the window here, I'll see that, you know, that the tree that's really close to the train tracks here the trees are going to whip by the window really quickly, right? So they're going to travel a large distance in a short amount of time, right? They, whoosh, whoosh, you know, they're whipping by. But things that are farther away, so now in the background here, we'll draw some uh, mountains or something. Right? So the mountains back here in the background, they're moving by the window, but they move much more slowly, right? In the same amount of time that that tree whips by, the mountain barely moves. And then, you know, the... Uh, the sun in the sky up here, you know, I mean, it's just barely even perceptible movement uh, over that same amount of time, right? So the sun is going to be sort of making its way across the window over the course of like, you know, an hour or two or something. Whereas, you know, the trees are whipping by, you know, every second, and the mountains are there for maybe half an hour, and eventually, you know, you sort of pass by them. So that's the idea of motion parallax, that we can judge the distance from us based on how quickly something appears to move past our field of vision. And the second motion-based cue that we have is called optic flow. And the idea of optic flow is that the way that things move on our retina tells us about uh, their, their distance from us. So if I throw a ball to you, the ball is you know, initially small, so this is going to incorporate relative size as well. But as it moves towards you, it's expanding in all directions equally. Right? It's growing at, at a uniform rate in all directions as it's moving closer to you. And it's the, the sort of rate of this growth, the way that it moves on your retina, that it, the way that it expands on your retina, tells you about how quickly it's approaching you and how far away it is. Right? So when it's very small and far away, you know, it's not growing as much. And as it gets closer, you know, as it's about to hit you in the face here, it's getting very large very quickly. And that's going to tell you about the depth. All right, so those are our motion-based cues. And the last cues that we have are the ones that involve the fact that we have two eyes. So we say these are binocular cues, right? Two eyes, binocular. 
All right, so there's two real uh, main binocular cues that we use. The first of these is disparity. This is called binocular disparity, or it can also be called retinal disparity. And this is the idea that we see two versions of the world, and then we combine them into one, right? So we have two eyes, so we're seeing two different views of the world, slightly different angles. And so the, the way that these two views differ helps us to judge depth. So how can you demonstrate this? Well, if you hold an object really close to your face, right, and you view it with just your left eye and then just your right eye, you see that it sort of jumps back and forth. It's, it's on the far right side of your visual field for your left eye, but on your right eye, it's on the far left side of the visual field. It's in very different places. And that tells you that it's very close to you. Whereas if you hold it at arm's length and you do the same thing, it moves a little bit when you switch eyes, but not that much. And if you put it on the other side of the room, you look at something that's very far away and you switch eyes, you see that the object doesn't really move at all. And that tells you that it's farther away. So the more different these views are, that tells us that the objects are closer to us. And this is how 3D movies work. They present two versions of the film to us, one to each eye, and then they sort of manipulate how different certain objects are in those two views, and that gives them this appearance of depth. Now, in the old days, they did this with red and blue colored lenses. So the red would filter out one version of the movie, the blue would filter out another version. The screen would be showing both, and that's why if you looked at it without glasses, it looks weird and the colors are kind of off and everything's a little fuzzy. That's because there's two overlapped versions of the movie on the screen. And the glasses separate them so that each eye only sees one version. And then your brain combines those into a apparently 3D version of the film. And this is the same way that modern 3D movies work as well. Uh, they don't use the colored lenses anymore. They actually use polarized lenses now to separate the two versions of the film. Uh, but it's the same principle. You have to send two different versions of the movie, one to each eye. So if you only have one eye, there's no way that you can enjoy those kinds of 3D movies. Okay, and the last cue that we have is called convergence. And so this is the idea that we have two eyes and that we have to move them differently depending on whether something is close to us or far away from us. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, uh, let's imagine these are my two eyes here. And if I'm looking at something that's really close to me, I have to point my eyes at this very narrow angle. Right? I have to actually move the muscles around my eyes and sort of point them in like this right, to look at my finger. And so that tells me that the thing I'm looking at, if I have to angle my eyes that way, it's very close to me. Whereas if I'm looking at the same object, but my eyes are pointing mostly straight ahead, you know, the angle is different. Right? The point where they converge means that they're at different angles, that tells me that the object I'm looking at is farther away from me. All right, so that's the final cue that we use to help judge depth. Okay, so uh, I hope you found this helpful. If so, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.